we're going to start a little series on where the president stands after five years in office. This series is going to be called, Yes, We Can, But We Didn't. This first one is going to be concerning foreign policy. The president's problem appears to be that he is reactive, not proactive. Maybe he'll throw an idea or two out there, but he definitely tends to not take those ideas and move forward with them. Takes him a few steps forward, then drops the ball. That's always a problem. Let's look at foreign policy. Middle East has really turned into a quandary and a chaotic, really bad situation that's going to blow up soon. Soon could be the next year or two. Who knows? But it's not good. Everything is right now focused around Syria, as everyone knows and sees. The president has a small victory getting the chemical weapons out of there, but who knows if all the chemical weapons are out. There's been a recent holdup, and who knows what's being hidden. The problem with the Middle East, especially when you're reactive, is that all the extremists get to come in and take control of the action. So in Syria, which we had a chance to maybe tamp down early, you have al-Qaeda coming in. Al-Qaeda has now is now fighting with the moderates, the quote-unquote moderates, whatever that definition is inside Syria, along with those who are backing Assad. So you have three different parties and they're fighting with one another. You have Hezbollah coming in from Lebanon, throwing in their troops, while at the same time there are now bombs going off inside Lebanon against Hezbollah or against the, the Christian uh, partners of theirs in the government, where that's getting upset. In Turkey and in Jordan, you have refugees flying in. Turkey's big enough to be able to handle most of the refugees. Jordan isn't. It has no real income. It has no oil. It has no army. It's just a very small country dependent upon Israel and other, Isra other Arab countries around there. They're taking in hundreds of thousands of refugees. Iran gets to keep playing the game by sending in their troops, the, uh, the Revolutionary Guard, while working on their nuclear program. At the same time, the Saudis are getting upset. You have the Sunni-Shiite fight. They are now backing the Sunnis. And then in Iraq, everything is falling apart because we pulled out of there. We didn't belong there in the first place, but we just pulled out of there too quickly. And we were not there to be a stop. So now you've lost Fallujah and other cities that are going while Iraq splits apart there. And where are we in Afghanistan? Nowhere. Nowhere. We can't make a deal to get out. We want to get out. We keep putting off the deal. I'm sorry, we keep putting off the date to get out because we can't make the deal. And what are we doing there? We're sending drones and killing people in Pakistan. Africa, Sudan, it just does not look good down there. Al-Qaeda has really generated itself, regenerated itself down there. So we're, and then if you look at Asia, China has no respect for the United States. You look at the Senecus, which are just a bunch, they call them islands, but just a bunch of rocks out there. But now the Chinese are trying to take dominion over them from the Japanese. They're trying to take dominion over other islands, which are basically rocks, from the South Koreans and opening up issues there. We are trying to send in some, some ships, but we are not really able to take control in Asia as we think we can to be able to help our friends there. Then you look at Russia, they, are, they have taken over essentially without arms, Ukraine. Putin has no respect for our president, for President Obama, does what he wants to do, took over half of Georgia, and is trying to look good for the Sochi Olympics, but we'll look out what happens afterwards. Let's see what happens to gay people. Let's see what happens to those who are fighting for democracy over there. Our foreign policy has to be proactive. When you are the Big, the, the most powerful country in the world, and you actually have morals, which this country does. Compared to all other countries in the world, this country cares, cares about others. That's why other countries may get mad at us, but always want us as a friend, because they know they generally don't have to worry about us. Yet now we're changing the rules. We're not telling our friends in the Middle East what we're doing. We're not telling the Israelis. We're not telling the Gulf states, the Saudis. We're just making deals with Iran and Syria, states that who knows if you can trust them to do anything while not making the same deals with our allies and looking out for our allies. We are trying to extend our reach into China, into the, into the, the China, into the Asia. It's not working. And Putin has been expanding his power everywhere. This is not good. This is not good. We can. 
affect the world. There is a very independent streak going on here. This country, people are not happy. They don't want to be involved. We've been isolationists almost from the beginning. But, but the problem you've got is when you have a reactive president and you're only reacting to actions that are going on by extremists who are going to be proactive and are going to be taking actions that are going to be contrary to our interests, there's going to be some real problems. And they're getting bigger and bigger and they're just slowly building up. The momentum's going. Rolling Stone gathers no moss. It just moves on. A real problem. Yes, we can, but we didn't in foreign policy.